so that's kind of how I turn my photos from looking like this to now looking more like this. State Patrol was down here. Goodness. Huh. Good evening, squids. It is a beautiful day out, but it's really fucking windy. So, I just went down to my boy Smog's. He hooked me up with a new tire because mine was pretty much gone. And here we are. Today, I wanted to talk about some of the things I do to get the quality of photo that I get and kind of my journey through photography a little bit. Cause that's one of the things that I just get kind of asked most is, you know, how do I take these pictures? How do I, um, how do I do whatever? And to be honest, like I'm, I'm far from a professional photographer or anything like that. I like the pictures that I take and I think that their quality has only improved over time. And I think that it's only going to continue to improve. Uh, cause I'm always learning new shit and always trying out new stuff. When I first started taking pictures, I think, it was also around the same time that I started riding. Um, but I always was kind of interested in photography, even though it wasn't something that was like a big part of my life or anything when I was a kid. I just remember when I like got my first phone when I was younger, it was like an iPhone 5 or something like that. And I just loved like taking really cool pictures on it. Um, I don't know why it was just something that I found kind of fun, and and then I didn't really like do anything with it or pursue it any further when I was in like middle school and shit. But in high school, um, a lot of the electives that we had were very much based on digital art. So I took a lot of digital media classes. Uh, including like photography um, and that kind of gave me a lot of just baseline skills that I still kind of use um, I started out like learning just some some very simple shit in like Photoshop or Illustrator um, and then when I took photography class like I don't know like junior senior year we started to play around a lot more with Lightroom and Lightroom was was by far my favorite thing to tinker with. It was just the way you could transform your photos so immediately, so quickly, was really cool to me. Um, and Lightroom is still pretty much what I use to edit all my photos. But when I was starting out, I got a, what was it, a, like a, it was like a Rebel T7. Canon Rebel T7 or, or T3, T5, something like that. One of the Rebels. Whoop. And I bought it on Facebook Marketplace for like $200, I want to say. And I had so much fun with that camera. I think I, I took a lot of pictures with it and I wasn't really planning on it, but it just ended up kind of happening that way. And it, it taught me a lot. Um, and then eventually around like last summer, around then, I, I wanted to move up to a something that had better video quality. Because, I, I don't know, I wanted to get more into video. Do fun stuff like that. So I bought a EOS RP 
and that has still pretty much been my main camera. Um, it it was it was a decent investment for sure, and I and I get great footage quality out of it. Not like the best or anything. I'll probably be looking at something more like an R6 or an R5 here in the future. But for now, it, it works just fine, and I and I love it. So that was kind of my my photography background and I just ended up using it a lot as I like continue to try to you know grow my social media and get better at, at whatever and that just kind of became the thing that I was best at because it was the thing that I I don't know maybe it was it was just one of those things that I was kind of naturally good at and you don't even need to be naturally good at it to take good photos if you have a good camera and you put on a preset that you like you're you're probably gonna be fine like you don't you can set your fucking camera in automatic and you'll be good um, the the quality of photos that you can get with just an iPhone are insane um, especially now what are they on like the 14 15 I'm on a new tire and gravel road. I'm not gonna push it, but I'm gonna kind of push it. Basically, my 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 photos used to look like this. This is what they look like, um, and that was when I was learning. and And then I came out with kind of my my favorite set of photos which was the ones on my KX450 Supermoto at the gas station. Those were, were some of my favorites. Um, and that was with the, the Rebel. I, we did a little bit of tweaking in, in Photoshop or Lightroom, one of the two. And in some of them, it might've been a little bit too much. Some areas, maybe not enough. I think they're a little bit overexposed in some areas and a little underexposed in others. But that's contrast. My basic rhythm, or rhythm, my procedure, my step-by-step -step process, whatever the fuck you want to call it, for taking photos is really, I, I'll just ride around like this and I'll find different spots that I like. This is a beautiful area um, to go like take some pictures. Which actually, I might wait till it, till it gets a little bit darker, till the sun sets a little bit more, but Find an area that you like, and that's that's kind of where it starts. And then I'll go ahead and you know figure out what would be the best you know time to go take these pictures. You know whether it's sunset. I I personally like doing night photography a lot more. Um, I think that's. I, I like kind of moody, moodier photos, but I also really like super colorful photos. I think I'm on kind of both ends of the spectrum with that, as far as, you know, my, my creative preferences. But I'll find a spot, find a time that I want to go shoot, and, you know, bring my bike out there. Usually I'm shooting by myself, so if if somebody's with me it's cool because then I don't have to you know set up the tripod and you can kind of get a little bit more dynamic shots faster it's just a little bit more efficient you know and usually I shoot in aperture um, I just shoot in aperture mode it's it's kind of um, or aperture priority Um, I think it has just kind of the best settings for the look that I want to use and depending on the shot depending on how light it is outside I'll switch between the uh, the 24 to 105 that I pretty much came with the RP that was the lens that I I bought with it um, or the little nifty 50 um, it's a little 50 millimeter 1.2 or 1.8 
one of the two. Um, it's a little 50 millimeter and I love it. It's, it's super fun and you get that cool shallow depth of field that you just don't get with the, the 24 to 105 in the same way. So I pick my lens, I set up my camera, and then, you know, set it up on like a timer, whether or not I'm in the shot or whatever. Um, if it's just like a picture of the bike, then obviously I don't need to set up a timer. I can just kind of point and shoot how I please. And I guess one of my biggest tips is always like shoot a little bit more than you think you need because it's always better to, to kind of get home and see that you have more footage than have not enough. And that goes the same with video um, and photos. A little KTM. Um, man, it's gorgeous out here. I love this road. This is one of my favorite uh, roads to ride on. Even if you're just chilling, or you can go fast. I remember ripping this road on my R6. It was fun as fuck. <laughs> If, it, if it's really bright outside too, I also like to use a little ND filter. Um, ND filters are great for just kind of basically putting sunglasses on your camera um, without having to, it, basically you get to underexpose the shot a little bit or just deal with the, the brightness that is going on, deal with the sun or the lights or wherever you're dealing with uh, in a more natural way and then you have more control later with your exposure because your exposure isn't already dumped super low to to counteract that but if i'm shooting at night i'm going to use the 50 because the 50 is going to pull in the most light generally and it is really windy i might just turn around i don't really want to get on fucking santa fe the 50 is going to pull in the most light for me so that's what I'm gonna use at night. I'm gonna take all my pictures, try out different angles, experiment a little bit. Um, I always really like the shots where... Yeah, I'm just turning around, fuck this. thing I don't know oh I like the uh, the shallow depth of field shots one of the cool things that I like to do especially if I'm just taking like b-roll or close-up pictures of the bike and not so much like a wide full frame composition is I'll focus I'll get relatively close to a piece I want to focus on let's say it's you know the, the clutch lever the brake lever or this whole front area here and I'm gonna focus in on one area and then blur out the rest so I, I personally like those kind of shots um, you get that cool shallow depth of field look that's kind of just the process of shooting and like you'll you'll be able to have a lot more fun with it and experiment it the more you do it so really just like go out and do it um, it might feel kind of like weird to go take pictures of yourself on your fucking motorcycle or your car in public people might you know you, you might have that kind of I don't know self-esteem or weird thing of like oh am I that guy right now and people might look at you weird but whatever who cares it's your fucking pictures take whatever you want um, and if anybody says shit just say hey I'm a photographer because you're a photographer now I don't really care if you're on your phone I don't really care if you're on a $10,000 camera it doesn't really matter you're pursuing a cool piece of art that you like and in my book that makes you a photographer then when you're done with your shoot you're gonna take everything home and remember you took more photos and b-roll or videos whatever than you needed to you're gonna take it all home personally I like to use Adobe for pretty much all of my editing softwares um, it's just what I know best and I 
just choose to pay like the 50, 55 bucks a month for the Creative Cloud service because I use it almost daily. So whether I'm in Photoshop or Lightroom or Premiere Pro or Illustrator or whatever, fucking mosquito on my visor. Oh, and I got fucking bug goop. Okay, the GoPro just died, I think. So, once you take all your footage, what I like to do is then go into Lightroom first. Even if it's video footage, I just like to kind of color grade my shit in there. It's not always the right move especially if you try to use a certain preset on a piece of footage or video that it just doesn't really work on it might just be better to color grade in your editing software but for me that's just what I do and once you're in Lightroom that's kind of when all the fun begins and, and you don't have to use Lightroom you could use a different software but as far as I know Lightroom is free on mobile um, which is really cool, especially if you're just taking pictures with your phone camera. And I have a ton of different presets that I've saved from just like other people online or when I go ahead and upload my like photo to Creative Cloud, it'll show me or it'll give me like suggested presets. And then I can just slap those on and call it a day if I want, or I can go ahead and like put it on and do a bunch of different adjustments on top of it and everybody's gonna want a slightly different look to their photos but personally like I have a, a set list of presets that I use most um, but they're not gonna work for every type of shot I'm not gonna use a super super low exposure preset that has a bunch of um, you know warm and dark color adjustments to it and light adjustments to it that's gonna just drown out a foot a uh, piece of footage or a photo that I took at night that just wouldn't make sense but then I have like a handful of night presets I have a handful of presets that I use for like snowy shots um, now that spring is kind of coming around and, and things are gonna be a lot more colorful outside I'll have a handful of kind of more like summer green and blue presets that I can use but they're actually should I turn no I'm not turning left I'm gonna turn right but the more you do it the more you're gonna find kind of a look that you want to go for most So find what, ki what type of adjustments you like to make. Um, for me, they're, they're kind of on both ends. I really like to go either really like moody and kind of color muted, or I like to go really big with it and um, do a lot of like color adjustments so it's very vibrant and you know kind of like cyberpunky or whatever and bright. Or if, if, or at the very least, just contrasty. Um, you don't want too much contrast because then it just drowns out the photo and looks like shit. But contrast is pretty much kind of your number one rule: is make sure that you're like. Your photo is going to be interesting to look at and it's going to look better if it draws your eye to certain places, right? So if you compose it right and you frame your shot well and then you do color adjustments on top of it, it's like, oh, it's going to draw the eye to this area or this area or whatever and it's going to just like flow really well. But at the end of the day, it's, it's all up to you. This is where you really get to have a lot of fun with it is editing. I didn't really have a script for this one, I'm 
kind of wishing I did now. And then once you make the adjustments you want to make, all you got to do is just export it and throw it up. Um, what I do, because I have a MacBook, don't you fucking do it. Um, because I edit everything on an Apple computer and I use an Apple phone, I can just airdrop the files once I've exported them to my desktop or my folder out of Lightroom. I can just airdrop to them to my phone and throw them up on Instagram. And that's kind of just my, my basic like workflow with that. What's that lady doing? I have no idea where I'm going. Oh, we back on the same road? No, this is a different one. So that's kind of how I turn my photos from looking like this to now looking more like this. And of course, like art in general is very subjective. So you might have a look that you think is really cool that other people don't like or someone else likes and you don't really like and that's totally fine. It's up to you. Um, I think one of the, the biggest things that helps is just like doing a bunch of research and learning about it because it's really not that hard at all. Um, even if you don't have fucking a ton of money to dump into a camera because you could spend all day on cameras but even if you don't have all that money lying around you can still take really awesome um, photos and videos with your phone. It's like anything else, you know, the more you practice, the more you do it, the more you're going to get better. Less is often more. Um, so if you find a preset that you really like, or you do a bunch of edits to your, uh, to your photo that you really like, but the photo is just something completely different than what it was, like maybe you should just tone it down a little bit and go with the same adjustments, but just just on a lower level it doesn't need to need to be insane so I know a lot of these aren't like super tactical tips tactical tips oh. I think these are just like some of the basic things that I do to you know make my photos look the way that I that they do and that's just one thing that I kind of get asked a lot about and I like my photos I'm I like them but I'm also very you know critical of them and I, I always want to be getting better so do your research like watch a ton of videos get into you know people like Peter McKinnon or, or any other like photography youtuber that can teach you these things on a more in-depth scale because then you can go apply them to any kind of art that you're shooting with a camera whether it's video whether it's with a phone whether it's with a massive DSLR or a mirrorless or you know whether it's landscape portrait whatever you name it you can apply all of those principles to it so I don't want this video to get too long I know it wasn't ultra specific but I thought I'd start a video on it and I don't know maybe I can do some more uh, more specific tips and whatever just stuff that I've learned but that's kind of just the, the basics of how I do it and a lot of people are going to do it differently but in the end that's kind of the fun of it is that it's completely up to you there isn't really a right or wrong way to necessarily do things so if you're interested in taking photos or just taking better photos then go out and just do it like that's all you really got to do it's the same thing with learning how to stunt or learning how to ride or getting in shape or whatever, you know, except things are a little bit more free, you know, uh, let me know if you like these kind of videos, if you're interested in photography, because I am and I'm always 
trying to improve and get better at it so maybe i'll make some more videos on it in the future but yeah guys ride safe go take some cool pictures make some cool art um and i'll see you later